Welcome back to the class on electrical vehicles and hybrid electrical vehicles. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the roadway fundamentals part. Vehicle kinetics. Nothing but when the vehicle is moving on the road, what are the parameters are going to affect on the vehicle? And what are the changes will be occurs in a vehicle? When the vehicle is moving on the road, the tangential component of the force will be changes. That is highly depending upon slope of the road. Suppose if any vector is representing in a tangential vector, then the equation will be simplified. That is the reason that we are representing the tangential coordinate. The tangential coordinate test means same as the fixed coordinate test. There is no change in the ZF axis, but the XF axis and YF axis will be changes. That is depending upon the roadway. Ut bar of XF, you know tangent vector in the fixed coordinate system, pointing in the direction of increasing X. Therefore, Ut bar of XF is defined as the T bar of XF by magnitude of T bar of so already we know that the T bar is nothing but a rate of change of position vector. So in this place we have to take this equation. Previous class we derived this one. The same manner the magnitude of the above vector that is the unit vector in the direction of the T F X of power. So why we are going to adapt the tangential coordinate system means to D to simplify the equation which are governing the vehicle. In order the second law of motion can be applied for the CG of the E V. In the tangential coordinate system, sigma F I equal to M into A bar that is equal to m into d v t bar by d t. Here what is the difference means v t nothing but a, the tangential component of the velocity or rotation where m is the effective mass of a vehicle. Now the component tangent to the road is equal to sigma f x t bar equal to m d v x t bar by the component normal to the road sigma f y t bar equal to m into d y t bar by d t. Suppose if the road is in this manner, we have taken the x axis in the, in the direction of the road. In this direction, the y axis will be there. All forces will be acting only in this plane only, xf and yf plane only. Then no force will be acting on the z axis. Sigma f bar of zt equal to m into d by dt of v z t bar equal to 0 because there is no force is acting on the a. There is only one force is acting on the a. That is the, when the vehicle is moving on the road, the vehicle force will be acting upwards. That will be compensated by the gravitational force on a vehicle. That's why the no force will be acting in the air. This is roadway. On the roadway, we are assuming that one vehicle is moving. This is the center of gravity. This is a tangential xt direction. This is a f road force. When the vehicle is moving on the road, some amount of weight force will be acting on the vehicle due to the road. That is the f road. The same manner, the gravitational force also will be acting on the vehicle. That is mg. The perpendicular to the xt bar, we have taken the one more axis that is the yt, nothing but a tangential coordinate system. We are going to resolve into mg into the two components. One is along the xt axis, another one is along the yt axis. So it is represented as a this is fg xt. This vector is nothing but fg xt. This is the rolling force. See here one more compound also will be there that, that is the FGYT. FG is nothing but a force due to the gravity. YT is nothing but a YT is nothing but in the direction of YT axis. The same manner this compound nothing but a FGXT. The gravitational force in the direction of the XT axis. This is rolling force. When the vehicle is moving on the road, there is a, some amount of force will be acting between the wheel and the road. That also should be opposite to the forward motion of a vehicle. So one more force also will be acting on the vehicle that is the FAD. Nothing but it, due to the A, there is some amount of fraction will be there on the front face of the vehicle. It is also opposing the, the forward movement of the vehicle. So all these forces should be overcome by the force which is available between the sides and the road given by the motor. Then only the vehicle will be moved forward. The whatever the force is required between the wheel and the road. If it is not sufficient to overcome these three forces mean, then the vehicle does not move. Whether it is plain road or gradient road, whatever it is. So some of these three forces are nothing but a F roll, nothing but a rolling force, FPAD and FGXT, road load force. Now here we have taken one horizontal axis. The angle between these two we defined as a beta, where beta is nothing but a gradient angle. That force should be overcome by the propulsion unit which is giving a force to the wheels that is nothing but a tractive force. The tractive force is nothing but a, it is a force experiencing between the wheels and the road. Now, FGXT nothing but a 
the gravitational force in the direction of tangential axis that is equal to mg sin beta from this point where m is the mass of the body g is the gravitational force beta is nothing but a gradient angle with respect to the horizontal line now we are going to see how this rolling force will be come into the picture suppose if the vehicle is stationary on the road the vehicle force and the force on a wheel both are aligned on the same axis so by that time the rolling force becomes a zero when the vehicle is moving the vehicle force will be upward there is some hysteresis with wheels of a vehicle and the road so because of that one whatever the load applied on the wheel will be misaligned with this vehicle force these two forces collectively giving a resistance to the forward moving of a vehicle simply giving a retardation to the this is mg this is rolling force this is centroid of a vertical the ratio of retarding force due to the rolling resistance and a vertical load on a wheel is known as a coefficient of rolling resistance that is denoted by c naught the rolling resistance force can be calculated given below f rolling equal to sigma of vx of t into mg into c naught plus c1 vxt okay if vxt is not equal to zero vxt is nothing but a velocity in the xt direction we are defining all these quantities in terms of a tangential coordinate already we define the c naught m is nothing but a mass of a vehicle g is nothing but a gravitational force this is the formula to find the rolling force if vxt is not equal to zero suppose if vxt equal to zero and ftr minus fgxt is less than the c naught mg then the rolling force becomes a ftr minus fgx ftr is nothing but a tractive force which is a force which is experiencing between the wheels and the road which is given by the motor in case of ev in case of hev that may be given by the electric motor or ic engine if the vxt equal to zero modulus of ftr minus fgxt greater than the c naught mg then that use this formula sigma of vxt ftr minus fgxt c not mg fgxt is nothing but a, the gravitational force in the x direction now how do you find this sigma of vx the c not value always greater than the 0.04 and less than the 0.02 which is unit less the c, one more constant also we have seen there where c1 is far far less than the c not c not mg is nothing but a maximum rolling resistance at a standstill sigma of vxt is given below the sigma of vxt equal to 1 the vxt magnitude is greater than the 0 it is equal to minus 1 when vxt is less than the 0 the aerodynamic force this is the thing which is related to the rolling force if we come to the aerodynamic drag force how we are going to calculate the aerodynamic drag force means by means of this formula fad equal to sigma vxt into 0.5 rho cd af vxt plus v not k where rho is nothing but a air density in kg per meter cube cd is nothing but a aerodynamic drag coefficient which is a dimensionless this value also will be less than the 0.2 af is nothing but a frontal area of a vehicle v not is nothing but a the velocity of the wind so here again the mag the sigma function of vxt you can take the value based upon the value of vxt from this equation thank you very much if you have any doubt you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my youtube channel